look at the training principles now. You can see that FITS is mentioned up the top with the asterisk beside it, and they refer to the four training principles that are used most. However, the other training principles are targeted in question, so it's important that you have a good understanding of them all. With regards to specificity, a word that's come up quite often, when we talk about training principles, we talk about specificity being that the improvements that are made within the body are going to be specific to the type of training undertaken. So if you undertake an aerobic based program with long duration at a lower intensity or submaximal intensity within the aerobic training zone, you're not going to get adaptations um, that are going to help with muscular power necessarily. So it's all about you get out what you put in. And that's the concept of specificity. In terms of frequency, it's how often a training program is undertaken and it does depend on the training program that you undertake. For example, plyometrics, you always need to have a rest day after plyometrics because it's so taxing on the body, whereas an endurance-based program can be undertaken up to five or perhaps even seven times a week, depending on how elite the athlete is. It's generally accepted that you need to train a fitness component twice a week in order to maintain your ability in that fitness component and three times a week to improve. Really important, the concept of overtraining where you train too much and certainly time is required in order for the body to recover. When we look at duration, we look at it from two different perspectives. The first is listed there. So duration refers to how long the training session is undertaken. And for an aerobic based training session, for example, it's accepted that it needs to be between 20 to 30 minutes at a minimum in order to get some sort of benefits. Duration might also refer to the length of the training program in terms of weeks. And again, six weeks is the minimum that you'd want to be undertaking the training program in order to get the adaptations. And eight weeks or 12 weeks is really ideal when you're talking about duration or length of a training program to get the required adaptations. When we're talking about intensity, we're talking about how hard. So frequency, how often, duration, how long, intensity, how hard. You need to be within the aerobic training zone for a cardiovascular workout or cardiorespiratory workout, 70 to 80% of heart rate max. And we talk about intensity as a percentage of RM in terms of resistance training, but we'll come to that more when we're talking about training methods. We talk about progressive overload. We talk about adding a variable or perhaps taking a variable away, for example, rest, in order to make it harder. Now, you should only ever target one variable at any one point in time, and it should only ever be manipulated by up to 10%. So for example, if you were undertaking a bench press, and let's say your bench press is 50 kilos, and you're doing three sets of 10 at 50 kilos, let's make it easy. When you're going to overload, and let's say we're going to overload weight, you would only overload it to up to 55 kilos, as that is 10% of 50. Detraining, if you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't train for that particular fitness component, you will have a decrease in your ability to perform in that. Now with variety, variety is really important for um, maintaining motivation for an athlete. It works against specificity to a certain extent. However, if you're a swimmer, for example, um, the swimmers don't just spend the, the whole time in the pool because that would become really monotonous and a little boring. So it's good for motivation. Um, and diminishing returns means that the closer you get to your capacity, the smaller the improvements. So when you start out undertaking a training program, you tend to get improvements quite quickly. But then as you get closer to what's called your genetic ceiling or your capacity in that particular fitness component, your improvements decrease. They get smaller. Individuality is basically another way of saying tailoring. A training program needs to be tailored for an individual. If they can't run, for example, let's say you're training them for a marathon, but they start out and you've got an annual plan, they start out not being able to run, you're not gonna get them to do hill sprints or a fart leg training session. You might get them to start walking. So those factors such as age, gender, and fitness taken into account so that the training program is individualized or tailored towards the needs of the individual. Let's have a look at some of these here. 
So progressive overload is where you're adding one of those variables to the weight or perhaps to the reps or to the sets, but only by 10%. You might also decrease the rest. So for example, in an interval training session, you might decrease the rest so that the individual is performing more and then resting less. You can see here that the progressive overload should be applied when the individual has undertaken adaptations so that they are able to build upon the physical characteristics that they've already got. So if someone has performed in this example on the left, the green line, if someone has performed to exhaustion and then you overload, they're not going to get the adaptation out of it. If you don't give the right adaptation or if you don't give the right overload, you won't get adaptation. It needs to be hard and it needs to be at an appropriate time. And you can see here with we're looking at the right, when you undertake work, your body breaks down. It's called a catabolic effect. And then it builds back up to cope with the stress. It makes an adaptation. And you should apply the progressive overload at that peak of adaptation so that the body again will have fatigue and then it will build up even higher to this stage here. So that's that concept of progressive overload for adaptation. What we're looking at here is we're looking at training week. So we're looking at a micro cycle and you can see that overload is being applied in the third week here. And then it's dropped back down a little bit to allow the individual to increase and adapt. And gradually you can see there is an increase in terms of performance. When we're looking at intensity, it refers to how hard. There's a variety of ways that you can measure how hard. Rate of perceived exertion down the bottom here is a really easy way. You don't need any equipment to do it. Is it as accurate? Well, maybe not. If you're working in the laboratory, you might be able to look at percentage of VO2 max. But when you do a laboratory test, you align percentage of VO2 max with rate of perceived exertion. And over time, you'll have a real ability to be able to tune in to what your percentage is and what your rate is. With a heart rate monitor, we quite often speak about short intensity training, for example, short interval training, for example, being at maximum or 100% of heart rate. In actual fact, with the lag, that occurs due to the response from the cardiorespiratory system or cardiovascular system. And if we're spe speaking specifically about heart rate, it can be difficult to determine if we're working maximally, which is why the rate of perceived exertion works really well. And you can see down the bottom when activity is lasting less than 30 seconds at maximal activity, it doesn't register as being maximal because of that lag effect and the um, inability of the cardiovascular system to be activated. So rate of perceived exertion, it can be pretty good. We'll talk about that a little bit when we come to chronic adaptations. But dura duration, we're talking about how long, so the length of a training program or the length of a training session. And we talked about some of those variables before that you can see. We've spoken about periodization already, which is blocking the training program into different groups to allow specific focus. But we wanna talk a little bit more here about this idea of tapering. So tapering is easing off on the training, in particular easing off on the volume while maintaining the intensity to allow peaking to occur. And it's really hard for athletes to get this exactly right. Particular events like swimming championships or marathon um, running or the Olympics require real work in terms of reducing the load and making sure that the athlete is at the peak of their physical condition. Physiologically and psychologically, they're at their maximum. And we've seen instances in the past where athletes have failed to be at their maximum. And um, we'll go through a few examples in, in class, but um, it really is an important concept in periodization. When we're talking about frequency, we're talking to about how many number or the number of times per week. We said three sessions and two sessions uh, to maintain. You can see just here the elite athletes, endurance athletes may train up to six or seven days per week. Um, 
this is due to them being experienced in this particular area and as it mentions here they can work at lower intensities uh, and some of them might be recovery runs as well. So three times to improve, twice to maintain. Specificity. So during training activities must replicate the energy system, fitness components, and major muscles. So basically a training program or a training session should look like the sport. And that becomes really important when it, co when it comes to team sport. So we've got an example here where we're looking at a circuit training here. So I want you to have a think as you're watching this about the muscle groups that are being used the actions and the fitness components in this circuit training program. So this particular one here, if you have a think about the fitness components, coordination, balance, this one here, power with the push off and think about how specific it is in terms of pushing off an opponent. Likewise with this one here, think about the muscle groups, biceps, triceps, pecs, muscular strength, muscular endurance, repeated contractions in the face of fatigue. And when we're talking about specificity, that's really what we're talking about. Individuality. It's very important that the training program is tailored to suit the individual needs and individuality. Some of the factors that you might need to take into consideration have been listed there, particularly age and current fitness level and experience. You wouldn't get someone who is, let's say, 14 to undertake a plyometrics training program that's advised for 16 years and older. Likewise, if you're working with someone who's much older, perhaps in a master's program, they might not not be able to cope with the load um, or they may not be able to cope with the duration of exercise that you might prescribe for someone who's younger. Down the bottom, really important that when we're talking about, um, let's say, a soccer game, for example, there are different requirements for different positions. So while there might be whole team training at times, there's going to be individualized program, which is specifically tailored to what they need for their position and also to their fitness requirements. This is talking about diminished return. And what you can see here with our level of fitness, it starts out at a baseline, initial level of fitness, and you get a fast rise However, when you get closer to your desired fitness level, or we'll call this the genetic ceiling, the top, the, the highest you can go, the finish off there, an untrained person will show greater improvements in response to training than their more trained counterparts. Oh, we've still got a couple more. Uh, variation, we said that's cross training. Um, swimming, for example, they might do some dry land training. Um, it maintains motivation and can stress muscles in a new way to get new adaptations. And detraining. If you don't use it, you lose it. And there's a few interesting stats there, but the one that I really want you to focus on is this one here. Only about 10% of strength is lost in eight weeks, but 30 to 40% of endurance is lost in eight weeks. So you lose aerobic adaptations faster than you lose anaerobic adaptations. And that often surprises people. So anaerobic adaptations, you don't lose as fast as aerobic adaptations.